Well, good morning. My name is Abigail Scott. I'm at Calico. Sorry. 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 You should be coming. Log of the keys and then we Welcome to our listening presentation. Okay, well, for our goal for the semester was to create an RC campaign that fits the following requirements. Our mission requirements given um, to us were that it must fit within the size dimensions of an eight foot tree and it must weigh less than 55 pounds. We were given this uh, course that roughly estimates about 8,900 feet and we have to complete three laps in five minutes, which equates to about 30 feet per second. Um, our personal design goals for the semester were to create an aircraft that was good for certain surveillance capabilities, meaning that it was good for stability over speed. Um, that was really our goal was to maximize, not maximize, but make it better for stability rather than aerobatics or something along those lines. Um, we also wanted to make sure that it was good for 3D printing manufacturability because we knew that we wanted going in to hopefully 3D print almost everything that we could besides the, the components that came along with it. So those are our mission requirements. Our initial estimations for similar aircraft, we looked up basically about, we knew we wanted to go for about a four foot wingspan. So we looked up aircraft that had about that and were fully 3D printed. And so a lot of those came around to be five or six pounds. Using that information, we estimated using our wing reference area of about 300 square inches that our wing loading would be about 2.4 to 2.8 um, pounds per square foot. Our thrust to weight ratio is about 0.6. We originally had it estimated for about 0.8, but we're advised that's probably a little too high for our, our application. That's better for something that wants to do those more aerobatic type systems and things like that. And for our purposes, we wanted to do more low speed, low altitude flight, and 0.6 is much, much better for that. Our lift to drag ratio, again, we looked at aircraft that were similar to ours. We also looked at Cessnas and other things that had the high wing design that we were going for, and that's fell between 11 to 13 in our lift to drag ratio. So we chose 11 to stay on the lower side. Um, and our cruise velocity, we estimated to want to be around 40 miles per hour. We knew that um, with the 30 feet per second, that equates to about 20 miles per hour. And that was our bare minimum speed for cruise and everything. So we want to make sure that we were flying faster than that the whole time. Display, there's a GIF of our overall air design. Uh, for our design, we made a blend of aerodynamic performance and stability, as well as uh, make use of a sleek design for uh, use of a streamlined fuselage. Uh, our main points were to prioritize, like uh, Abby said, speed, I mean, stability over speed. So we were gearing towards a, a, an aircraft that would be able to uh, go, be stable at, at low speed, but also be able to like, have that maneuverability in terms of like aligning with our goal in terms of the search and, and rescue and all of that. Uh, our future one makes a tail dragger configuration. So we chose that because uh, it gives you the advantage of landing in rough um, uh, landing areas as well as providing us with a shorter um, takeoff and landing um, distance. Uh, as well, you can make you can see that we make use of rounded uh, surfaces. That's because we saw that that provides per, uh, better performance in low speed conditions in terms of our uh, non compressible flow. And so we we made use of those rounded other surfaces for improve on that. Um, and overall, we make uh, we prioritize stability, right? And we prioritize um, control over that aspect of improving our speed. That's mainly our focus. Um, starting off with our wind design, these are the constants that we uh, established. Uh, mainly, we we were gearing towards, uh, like I said, low speed. So we had to choose a, an airport that had better uh, low speed performance and making sure that we use a high uh, 
uh, wing configurations that are go aligned with the surgeon refuse the need to be able to see the ground. And this allows us to increase the stability of our aircraft. And uh, like I mentioned before, the wingtips just improve maneuverability, reduce voices at the, at the wingtips, as well as just, you know, the performance and low speed. So this is our, uh, like a CAD design of our wing. This is half of our wing. As you can see, this is our, where we are going to mount our servo. Uh, this hole is where we are going to, um, like, our cable, your, our servo cable are going to go through there, as well as we incorporated a spar hole that will be spanning throughout the whole wing. And this is located at the quarter cord in order to provide a better rigidity in the wing. And in order, in terms of manufacturability, like we said, we're 3D printing everything. So we make use of the of the all the 3D printing capabilities, making use of an X uh, design in our wing, where the 3D printer can actually print these 45 degrees um, uh, spar, like ribs and spar, the combination of spar and wing um, ribs, and just to make the whole wing more rigid and more stable. And these um, Ribs are like smaller than the nozzle uh, or close to the nozzle of the 3D printer. So these are like around 0.4 millimeters. Uh, moving on to our fuselage design, obviously, as any other aircraft, our, our design goal is to be able to store propulsion components or electrical components and be able to uh, connect our wing and tail to you know, have the, an actual aircraft. So, we made uh, we integrated features as in like low low thickness uh, fuselage skin, as well as uh, an internal structure that will provide the uh, rigidity and the sturdiness to this uh, skin. And as well, we incorporated an, an access point in order to be able to successfully access any electrical components within our fuselage that are important for us to actually you know fly. This is the visualization of our CAD design. Starting off with the tail, uh, we are using um, these type of uh, attachments for both our vertical and, and horizontal tail. And we also have servo holes that are one for the rudder and the other one for the elevator. And there's an elevator hole in order to synchronize both elevators at the same time. So we have that coordination between both elevators. And moving on to the to the front, we have our access point where we are gonna access all the electrical components, propulsion components, as well as our holes for our servo uh, cables coming up from the wing. Moving on to the internal structure of our fuselage, uh, we make use of an X and cross like Supreme post uh, structure for our ribs to make sure that we reduce buckling uh, and provide more uh, rigidity to areas that are not actually supported by these ribs, as well as having an internal structure for our access point. Uh, yeah. And this is the, the, the nose cover that we're going to use for our uh, access point. So you saw there was a cover. This is what is going to be used to cover it up and be able to have that sleek design for our fuselage. And we make use of a, a spring-loaded system in order to allow us to remove this nose cover uh, from the fuselage and have that access, that easy access to all of the electrical and propulsion components. And this part is also, uh, you know, the structure is uh, rigid because of these ribs that are used to support, you know, any forces that are going to be facing the, you know, this front so is getting all the forces from the flow, and so we need that sturdiness. Yeah. So, yeah. For our craft, we chose a uh, traditional tail, um, which is a simple but stable design that will also allow us to easily attach the rear dr uh, tail dragging wheel to the rudder, such that we can have good uh, control while on the ground, uh, steering on the ground. And uh, um, um, uh, also, for placement of the tail, we, uh, 
we found that in a lot of common RC planes that the, the tail's positioned three times the length of the cord and the root of the cord, the cord length at the root is seven inches, seven times three is 21 inches. And so we place the quarter cord of the horizontal tail 21 inches aft of the quarter cord of the wing. For the horizontal tail, we chose a knack at the below 12 to match thickness with the wing, but we chose symmetric because it does not need to produce lift at cruise, at that much lift at cruise. And uh, um, for sizing, we used a volume coefficient of 0 0.6. Uh, and we also chose an aspect ratio of 5. That, uh, that is a little bit uh, higher in the range, but we did that because we wanted more stability longitudinally. Um, using those sizing coefficients, we got our sizing of the horizontal tail. Um, and we also found that uh, the elevator should be about roughly a third of the total reference area. The, the reference area of the elevator should be about a third of the reference area of the total horizontal tail. For the vertical tail, we also went with a symmetric uh, NACA 009, but, and we found that you can match thickness or you can go a little, little bit thinner. And since we want to reduce weight, we went with that NACA 009. Uh, very similar, we picked a uh, volume coefficient of 0 0.05, which is about mid of the range for common aircraft. And um, we also did a, the rudder size is about also one third of the total reference area. As you can see, we have a very elliptic shape for our horizontal tail, and that's so we have an electrical distribution, uh, lift distribution. And uh, we uh, we also, uh, for the total uh, vertical tail area, we do have a dorsal fin, which uh, was included in the beginning CAD model, and then we determined the sizing of the vertical tail. And we're like, okay, so we need to. We liked it aesthetically, so we kept it. And this is just a uh, fair viewing of the horizontal and vertical tail. All right, for the landing gear, first off, we chose a tail dragger configuration with two wheels in the front and one on the back. One reason we chose this is so we could use our specific tail landing gear assembly, which you can see here, which I'll explain further in a second. And we wanted to make it so the two front wheels took 9% of the weight, while the rear wheel took the remaining 10%. This was done by placing the front wheels and rear wheel at specific points, both before and aft of our projected CG. And for the components, first off, a custom aluminum structure for the attachment of front wheels to the fuselage. I'll explain that one in the subsequent slides. And for the front wheels, two 1.6 inch 40, mil, 40 millimeter PVA foam wheels. And for the tail landing gear assembly, the wheel itself is also a 1.6 inch 40 millimeter EVA foam wheel. And the way this landing gear assembly works is it's actually able to attach directly to the rudder so that the rudder itself, rudder deflection, controls the rotation of the rear wheel so we can control the direction our plane's moving on the ground. And we chose EVA foam because initially when we were researching, we found a lot more options for foam wheels as opposed to rubber wheels for an aircraft of our size. And EVA foam wheels are also lighter than rubber wheels. So that's why I chose that. And we kept our wheels relatively small with no tread since larger wheels, larger treaded tires are typically used when taking off in grassy fields. And since our test flights will be, our takeoff will be on a smooth concrete runway, Smaller, untreated tires were deemed more suitable. Now, this is the structure for attaching the two front wheels to the fuselage. This is our initial design. It was still on the CAD model. We made a recent update to what we we're going to do to that. So originally, that one would be 3D printed PLA as the X cross section. But after doing some social analysis, FEA on it, we ended up changing to an aluminum sheet metal design, which is simplified. U structure. And for the structural analysis, we used on simulation. This is the aluminum piece, and this is the original PLA piece. While the max stress is greater in the aluminum piece, 
uh, it's significantly stronger materials, but factor of safety is much higher with 14.6 as opposed to 3.43 for the PLA structure. And our max display for the aluminum was also about a millimeter less. While it is a little bit he heavier than the PLA, the decreased deflection, greater factor of safety means a more rigid, stronger structure while only marginally sacrificing in the overall weight of the aircraft. Um, moving on to the propulsion system, the five components were chosen for their own reason. Uh, first, we started off with our approximate weight and our 60% thrust to weight ratio, and found that we wanted a static thrust of around three and a half to four pounds. So using that and our size requirement inside our fuselage, we chose the Tempest uh, thrust motor, which has uh, 3.801 pounds of static thrust. Uh, it just fit ours the best based on availability, and we went with that. Um, moving on to the propeller, the 10 inch diameter by 7 inch uh, pitch angle uh, helps a little bit with increasing our speed. So we said that the minimum would have been 20 meters or miles per hour. So we went out and wanted to go up to 40. So although the majority of our aircraft is built for stability, we added a little bit of speed in our propulsion system. So uh, in order to keep the all the systems safe and all electronic components safe, we went with a uh, the ESC of 80 amps. So we learned that we need to have uh, an ESC that's at least 120 percent of the motor for amperage, so that we can keep everything safe in flight, and that there's no problems. And so our uh, our motor has 58, or its max continuous amperage is, or max continuous current, sorry, is 58 amps. So 120 percent of that was 69.6. So we went up to 80 amps, and uh, There we have the location of where we want our propulsion system in the front, as far forward in front of the quarter cord as possible, because obviously we want to keep our center of gravity at the quarter cord. So the tail adds weight with the servo motors and all the other components at the back. So moving our propulsion system as front where as possible gives us a little more balance. Uh, our propeller is all the way on the outside of the nose, as you saw on the model, and this, along with the landing gear, should balance out our center of gravity where we want it to be. Um, for our flight time, we calculated this based off of the 80% of our battery draw and the current draw from our motor, and it's defined a flight time of 4.16 minutes. It's getting close to the five minute uh, mark, but we will be able to make get, we will be able to complete the course in an ample amount of time. So, yeah, that's your both system. Okay, so moving on to control surfaces and our servo selection. So for the purposes of our plane and our design goals, we have three control surfaces. We have ailerons, elevators, and a rudder. Um, so for the ailerons, which are um, found in the wing, we have the servos, uh, we have an inset in the shell for the servos themselves as seen in the wing design that David showed earlier. For those servos, we're planning to use two 17 gram plastic servos that connect to a push rod and a control horn that's directly on the surface of the aileron itself. For our tail, we have the rudder and the elevator. So for the rudder, we're using a nine gram plastic servo that's in the back of the fuselage as seen in this diagram and connects to a control horn on the um, rudder itself. As we had mentioned previously, the rudder is connected to the back tail gear. So this servo here will control, control that landing gear as well. Um, for our elevator, we also have the servo in the fuselage and the back fuselage with a push rod connecting to the elevator itself, and that'll be a 17 gram plastic servo. 
As David had mentioned previously, this elevator has a rod connecting through the fuselage itself, meaning one servo will be able to control both sides of the elevator. Um, we intend to have medium throw for our servo rods, meaning we'll have about 90 degrees of rotational freedom. And our main method of attachment, it will be to glue the servos into their respective holes and potentially line them with tape in the event we have to remove the servos. Structural analysis of our plane mainly focuses on the uh, the wing, and we simplified the structural analysis to essentially the the analysis of the support beam that's going to be running through the core of our aircraft. Um, the beam spans the entire length of the wing, as you saw in the original design, and a diameter of zero point seven five centimeters, which is relatively small. Um, so we came up with the, uh, the stress felt at the base of the wing by finding what our estimated maximum load for the wing is, which was derived using the elliptical lift distribution of the wing. We came up with 215.14 megapascals. And with that, originally we were gonna go with an aluminum design for the support beam, but we decided that was too heavy and a little too weak. So we went with a carbon fiber cylinder. Um, so uh, the carbon fiber also allows us, it allows us to save weight and space on the wing as well. And using the strength of 600 megapascals, the carbon fiber offers a factor of safety of 2.78, which is much greater than the original 1.5 we calculated before. Moving on to the static stability of our aircraft. Um, so for all three of the directions, basically what we did was we took the individual moment derivatives um, of each of the pieces of, of our airplane um, and we totaled those together and then got our final values. So starting with the pitch moment derivative um, or the longitudinal static stability of our aircraft, we took the wing, the horizontal tail and the fuselage and the propeller. Um, the first three we were able to do um, with Flow 5 um, and putting that into a software. Um, we did have to, it's important to know, we had to um, simplify the fuselage down um, into a similar shape, but um, just not as complex as our design, but still to get an estimate. Um, and then with the propeller, we had to use various equations um, to get that value and then added that in after. Um, so the final value we got for that is negative 0.7 per radian. Um, and that was within the range that we had initially targeted, um, which was zero and negative two, just based off of previous literature that we had um, read for similar aircrafts to ours. Um, and then moving on to the yaw moment derivative. Um, so we did the same exact thing. We took the wing, the vertical tail, and the fuselage. Um, we were putting the flow five, and we were able to get a value of 0 0.024 per radian. Um, and that's greater than zero, which means we have static stability in that front. Um, and that was within the range we saw. I think 0 0.04 to zero within that range um, is good static stability for our size aircraft. Um, then moving on to the roll moment derivative um, with the lateral static stability, we did the same thing with the wing, the horizontal tail, and the vertical tail. Um, and we got a value of negative 0 0.055. Um, and that value was a little bit on the lower side. I know. The literature showed negative 0 0.05 to about negative 0 0.3 um, was like the range that we saw, um, but we're still within that that range, just on the lighter side. All right, uh, for most of the analysis, we use uh, flow pipe and at the beginning, a little bit of SLR. Uh, uh, it was used from the beginning uh, to choose the uh, the core and the uh, the core and the length of the wing. Uh, then we transitioned to flow five to do all the static and dynamic uh, stability of the aircraft. Uh, a lot of um, of 
configuration has to be input manually for the airplane to simulate the same model that we were uh, uh, from the beginning. Uh, all the weights uh, were taken into account. Uh, the components were added into the model. Uh, um, similar distance uh, from the center of gravity was added. Uh, and then an extra weight was added to try to configure where we wanted to locate the center of gravity of the airship. Uh, uh, for the dynamic stability, we took all those derivatives from uh, the static um, and created a state space uh, matrix, which let us analyze uh, how our aircraft will handle uh, different uh, setups of. Uh, uh, air winds uh, going through the uh, uh, Although flow five has a great tool where it shows uh, the dynamic analysis and the results from the matrix in a visual way, so you can actually see how the aircraft will react to those um, perturbances. And uh, the only one that uh, show a little bit of uh, not coming back exactly to their point, to, to their starting point, was the A mode, which showed that it would have a perturbance on the C uh, axis, uh, and it will come back to the original state, but however, it will be a little bit over the starting point uh, for that axis. As for manufacturing parts, as we kind of talked about for manufacturing first and producing, so we began with the wing and we started with the configuration that reduced the weight of the wing. We used the called spiral phase, in which the nozzle of pressure doesn't lift off the system. This helped with intro and also making sure that the surface was good. So we adjusted the settings until we got the desired surface for the wing. After that, we added the hole along the, the wing for the rod to connect them. And we printed out all eight of the components because the wing was broken into eight components in order to print on pictures that we have access to. And um, of the eight components that we printed, we reprinted about two of them on different printers in order to see if the weight change because of that, we were very focused on minimizing our weight. Next, for the fuselage, we were mainly focused on the skin thickness and the ribs on the inside. For the skin thickness, we originally started with 0.1 inches, which we then reduced to about one millimeter. And currently our design is 0.4 millimeters, so we reduced it more. As for the ribs, our initial design had the ribs in the configuration of a cross on the inside, but after analyzing that, a little bit more closely, we realized that the structural integrity throughout the plane wasn't, well, throughout the fuselage wasn't as good. So we decided to design it into having a cross and an X superimposed on each other, which gave us better structural integrity throughout it. Um, as we were reducing the skin thickness, we were increasing the thickness of the ribs in order to keep the structural integrity good. Um, we were focused on reducing the weight of the fuselage because when we printed out one of our parts, it was pounds, which was a lot higher than we initially expected. So now, not only with the new design adjustments, we are also planning on using lightweight TLA and regular TLA, which can decrease the weight up to 50%. So that is our expected. That's what we're planning on doing next. We had printed out the full fuselage, but now with the design adjustments and the new material, we'll have to do that. Um, our next uh, thing that we had to work on was determining how we were going to attach the horizontal and vertical tails. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit already, but the horizontal tail was going to be connected with three eight-inch rods with a diameter of a quarter of an inch. And this attaches both the right and the left parts of the horizontal tail. And then we also have another rod connecting both the elevators in order to synchronize their movements. 
As for the vertical tail, that will be attached using five extruded cylinders um, and will be attached to them separately. That is our tentative plan for that. Um, so after we have figured all of that out, as for the manufacturability of our design, the wing components were taking up to 17 hours to print and the fuselage components were taking up to 18 hours to print, but now they're adjusted design for the fuselage, it'll probably take less than that. And we have our fuselage, the horizontal, vertical tails, and the control surfaces to still print. And that's what we will continue doing. This is what we have printed so far. And that those are our next steps in the so that concludes our progress so far on this report. Thank you. Um, I did see it. Yeah. Sorry, I have something to say. Um, slide 16. This is in the uh, main area here. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Why did we do it here? <laughs> I am without it's on my phone. <laughs> yeah, why why that as opposed to handcuffs? <laughs> uh, somebody so somebody gave you a hammer. And everybody really started with like a nail, right? Um uh, I want to ask one question. Were you in the actual when that did explosion at this class? <laughs> Probably is probably yes, probably no. It, uh, yes, right. Okay. So, I, 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 I thought at the beginning, like, no FDA kind of application Yeah, I, I would say, especially for, for some something like this, where everything is, you know, just, just far, right? These are hand count kind of calculations. Um, so, I, I would encourage you, you know, not, not that FDA is not a good tool. Uh, and it's certainly used, but in my experience, it is overused. Um, and so to the extent you can, try to idealize things uh, to where you can do a hand count. Uh, so, so on this specifically, uh, on, on the design of this, you have a ton of, of lateral strength, right? Like, like having them triangulate like you do um, is going to give you a, a ton of side-to-side -side strength. Um, but it looked like they were connected. Um, is, is that like... Are we showing like five connection points at the, the top there? Those are looking like the nose by the thing. Oh, okay. So, but this is connected to the understanding of the fuselage. Yeah. What, like two points, three points? Yeah, two points. Two points. Okay. okay. Um, why are we so strong laterally, but no strength forward to back other than the moment that you can create through the uh, through that attachment? Like, is, is there a reason you expect your loads to be significantly greater? In one way versus the other. Most of where our stresses. Yeah. So I think we're going to use uh, what would be enough. Okay. All right. It, it just seems. That maybe the loads aren't super well understood um, because I don't I don't expect there to be a lot of side to side load on the gear, right? Um, front to back, if you hit a bump on on taxi or or, or landing, that's gonna you know kind of push or pull the uh, the gear forward and back, um, and so it, it just it sticks out. In my mind, of like this is is potentially a, a, a concern. Um, the fact that you, I mean, you've got the vertical load coming down, and you've got your legs kind of spread out means it's going to want to spread that way. And so maybe there's some um, like vertical load uh, reason that you know you're trying to prevent the the legs from like you know just twisting off that way. Um, but it, it seems. Over designed for that load case and maybe under designed for uh, for front to back load. So uh, I, I would say understand a little bit. Uh, and now on, on slide 19, when we're talking about the uh, the wing, yeah. Um, 
So here we're saying, okay, we've got to stretch the wing root of, of 200 uh, MPA and, and uh, allow carbon fibers 100 MPA. Great safety factor of 2.78. What do you have a safety factor that you're designing to, or is that you're just saying, well, this is what we have and good enough? Uh, we were designing to 1.5. Okay. Um, in, in general, and, and same thing for, for the landing gear, um, in general, if you're presenting a structural analysis in aerospace, um, industry practice is to use a margin of safety rather than a factor of safety. So whatever your defined factor of safety is, right, it's 1.5, you say, okay, well, my uh, expected loads on the structure are, you know, say 50 pounds. So bump that up on my one point factor safety. So now I have to show good for 50 times 1.5. So I have to show good for 75. My analysis says I'm actually good for say 150 pounds, right? So I'll take 150 divided by 75. That's two. I'll subtract one from that. And then my margin of safety is 1.0, right? And so positive margin of safety means I've met my requirement, right? If my margin of safety is negative, wouldn't come show that to me, you would go, you know, fix the design. But but to me, I'm looking like, do I see a positive margin of safety? And then I, I understand that you guys uh, have this is this is like a indication that you guys are familiar with what you're doing, right? Uh, and it doesn't mean that you did it right, but it means that I'm not as suspicious. Right. So so kind of following those those being aware of and following those industry norms would be like a, a good sign. Um, but that said, so so here I I really like to see where that load comes from, right? So if you say my stress my wing root is 200 MPA, that comes from my elliptical load distribution and you know the uh, the total distribution and the the you know the center of the uh, distributed force is here, and that creates a moment of X, and then MC over I for a what a tubular spar right um, gives me my the stress my so so. Flesh out those details a little bit in in this uh, this type of presentation. Um, but I, you know, I, I certainly appreciate that you know you, you got it there. You're doing the analysis. Uh, it sounds like like hand count kind of stuff, which is good. Um, and so, so I, I like to see that. Um, I don't know that I saw a ton of detail about how the wing is actually attached to the fuselage. I, I know I remember you, you guys were talking about like this is one of the functions of the fuselage is connection points for wing and, and tail. So I, I don't think we actually talked about that. Or maybe I, I just don't doubt about that. Yeah, we did. I think the point is actually we're going to control things in like the future of the wing, two stuff in case one of the other breaks, mm -hmm. one is still doubtful or crash that out. So each, each wing is going to be connected to the fuselage? Well, the whole wing is like it's one structure. So or also you can have Yeah. Okay. Is that 
this Spartan X. Well, I'm, I'm talking about like the where you're contacting the ground, right? As you actuate the rudder with the wheel on the ground, um, is the fact that your wheel is not in line with your hinge, is that going to cause issues? I don't believe so. Like the part of the order, like we've seen, like we got the part of that was not like the two videos, and it, it didn't look like it was a problem, but I don't believe so. Money can't expect to expect one thing that this picture is connecting the rods that technically this is actually positioned like right here, and two connecting rods connect attached to the rudder itself, so it's acts like that. Okay, right. that was one of the questions about this. Yeah, like you don't have it drawn correctly here, correct? Yes, yeah. right. Okay, okay. I have one question. So I heard when you guys talk about these parts, and you said there is one silver connector to the landing gear. What? Say again. One silver so, connector to the landing gear. So the circle itself is actually connected to the rudder, and the rudder moves, or the uh, landing gear moves based off how the rudder moves. So the servo itself will be attached here, and because the landing gear is attached, the rudder is attached. So the servo it's not directly attached. Yeah, the. It will work. The only thing the thing I was gonna ask about this was like here you have it drawn that the landing gear is directly attached to the rudder, which is gonna make it very difficult for like the load passing. Yeah. Um and I know you guys just chose like a tail wheel that is like supposed to be mounted to the fuselage, correct? Mm -hmm. And you have it drawn yeah, it differently. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. So this part right here will be attached to the fuselage, and then the wheel itself will be the same thing there. And it's going to be using these springs that are whatever the deflection by the rudder, you know, that will be translated to the okay. movement of the wheel. Yeah. This will probably be because one less servo to control the landing gear would bounce down, which is all of the rudder. So when in the air, when the rudder moves, the wheel will off. Yeah. Uh, most of you want to talk about the response point from um, from the staff. Uh, we're, we're talking about the uh, aerodynamics. Yeah. 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 Okay. So here, I heard something that I like, um, and and again, coming from a structure's perspective. Um, a lot of structures is knowing how to idealize a structure to, to analyze, right? Um, to be able to say, this looks like a beam, this looks like a flat panel. Um, if I'm going end to end FEM, I can eliminate these details and, you know, throw out these holes. Um, um, so you said you idealize the, the fuselage in order to get a good, um, uh, well, in, or, in order to be able to uh, model uh, the, the pitch model, right? Um, and, and so I like to hear that. Uh, the question that that brings to mind then is how big a contributor is the fuselage to your pitch moment? And you expect that maybe some of that idealization is going to significantly affect the moment calculated. Uh, I don't believe like it was significantly affected. Like I think it, it came out to like a, a super large value, like medium size value. And, like we didn't have to change a whole lot of the design, just like more like rounding some edges, just like making it kind of approximately more like an airfoil than just like our fuselage shape. Mm -hmm. so that was where, where that came from. But like, I don't think it was like heavily modified, just like a little bit more streamlined. Just okay. like, so what, 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 I don't remember off the top of my head. Honestly, like, I couldn't tell you right now. Okay. But I, I'm not sure. But less than 50 at least. But like, I'm, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, first, thank you guys. Uh, I want to, first, I want to talk about the presentation itself. So, um, I the lecture about presentation a week ago. So, how many of you were there? Okay, so almost all. Okay. Um, my feeling is that some of you did very well, but some of you is, I, I don't know how to and prepare. Um, Purely from presentation. So um, I, I understand that you guys may feel nervous or feel some, but those all the kind of nervous or anything like reading the notes or anything can be fast backtracked. 
if you pair it enough, you will feel less nervous. Uh, you won't need to read anything. That's what I mean. And um, so, but let's consider this just like practice before the final presentation. I hope you guys can prepare better, uh, less nervous for the final presentation, and you don't need to bring any notes to read. Um, so, and also, again, for the presentation itself, uh, the thing that I know that for your whole semester that you work for the whole group work for several months, it's impossible to put all the information in the third minute presentation, but you need to figure out what are the more important information to put in this third minute. I mean, as uh, Tom mentioned, uh, we want to see some structure calculation like in GRS, like the elliptic curve, the MCFI, a little bit of calculation there. And also he mentioned that we we think it's very important to see the like how you attach the wind to the field action. And we think those are the important information you might be considered put in the third minute presentation. And also, I mean, you spend all the time talking about like uh what kind of server you use, what brand, so like plastic, how many G's, and also like the EVA foam wheel. I mean, and the talk about the plastic foam wheel and PVA foam wheel. I mean, why does this matter? If you don't even have a key thing in your presentation, why does it matter? Like, why do I even care? Either it's, it's rubber foam uh, wheel or like easy. I don't even know what easy I mean. Um, why? You need to think about what is more important information to put in the third minute presentation. And also, I don't see a big logic. Like, as I said in the presentation, lecture, uh, the whole presentation should have a big logic. Each each topic, structure, and the wind design, everything should be a, its own logic uh, in your presentation. But what, what I see here is like gather detailed information everywhere. I don't see the structure. I, do, I don't see the logic of your presentation. Um, so these are all the things I emphasize purely about presentation part. Um, and now, page six for the details. Um, so for the internal supporting structure, is, is that really necessary inside the wind? The, the bar reach, I mean, it, do you really need that much internal supporting structure for the wind? Well, it's really thin. I don't know, it's really thin. We make it work without any, uh, without those um, things. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you need to show me some calculation. If, if that's necessary, if not necessary, don't do that. Okay. Because weight is a serious problem for your design mm -hmm. right now. It's not like, oh, I, I make it safer. It's not safer. In the end, you cannot take off because of extra weight. Mm -hmm. I know. It's <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, uh, for the page, uh, page eight. Uh, where, yeah, I, I don't understand. I mean, the, Let's say, I don't know how to describe it, my, my language is not good, but why they're like inside and outside, what, why the thickness is just like so thick, the few such. I don't understand. Why do like the width? Yeah, why do yeah. like the Well, because of our design, a lot of times it would be a little bit of a spiritual rescue, you know, that kind of that type of goal. You want to have the capability to, you know, in a, if we were to make this like an actual whole frame, be able to transport people, be able to transport equipment, and be able to have that. And not transport people, obviously. Yeah, I know, but say we were to make it, you know, an actual plane. That's, we're just aligning, you know, like if we were supposed to be making a temple, and we're just making a scale. I, I don't see the purpose of design twice. I think I saw the actual printed part last week, right? I think I told you guys. Yeah. Um. I don't see the point to like have so complicated piece of structure. I mean, there's inner uh, wall and the outer wall, and there's so wide uh, between the inner one and outer wall. Yeah. What, what, you, what you're looking at is what the thickness of all this. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. Right. That's, that's a fairly massive piece of structure. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? What's the point? I don't see the point. 
you, you, when you, whenever you design something, you need to know the goal. For the future, what is the goal? For the electronics inside, you have the batteries, you have any kind of electronic unit. That's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. And if the room is not to the electronics inside, you're done. Why is it extra things to cost extra weight and you, you need to worry about the, the weight and you need to worry about not getting paper? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, automatic your design. Um, uh, page 10. You said you have a spring system to open the cover or something? I don't know. Yeah, is there uh, all that is still here? There's a, the spring would be connected to there. The spring would be connected to this like sliding piece. And you would use the sliding piece to move this, like to remove the actual nose, nose cover. And then it would go back to its place. Okay. It's fancy. Help you work. Help you work better. <laughs> I mean, everything uh, more than unnecessary. It has a chance to fail. So uh, if you think it's necessary for your project, I'm okay. But yeah. Um, uh, page sixteen. Oh, fifteen. So I think uh, you said you want to use aluminum in the end. Compare with PA. Um, but the catalog shows like it's pretty thick. So what is the thickness of the aluminum you can Okay. Okay. Um, so it should not be this thick. Because from the catalog, I feel like it's big chunks of material. If you, you actually I understand if this is cat model for PA, I understand, but if this cat model for aluminum. Do you want me to read or do you want to listen to you? 
And, and also, the, the thing on the, the, the thing on the right side, there are so many information there. What's the point? I cannot read the information there anyway, it's so tiny. If any information in front of slides, I cannot read the information. So be careful when you make the slides. And also flow file, what does flow file mean? The title of the slide is so far. Oh, yeah, well, I don't want um, page 22. And problem, what is the x axis and y axis for, for two for two graphs? Oh, yeah, I wear my glasses, so you cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I uh, make sure that in front of the presentation we don't have to. Uh, page 22. Oh, oh, oh this is page 22. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, this is pretty much what I want to say. <laughs> also, my physical design and also the internal structure of the link. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, some smaller things like on 517, you guys were talking about ADM BSD, right? Um, but you show like a 16 amp BSD, you are using the ADM or using the 16 amp? Oh, I was specifically saying about it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Sure. Um, let's see. And on slide 17, which is right here, yeah, you mentioned the PG at the quarter cord. Uh, I know somebody said that. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, do do we do we look at static margin at all? All right. I didn't know. Okay. I was going to go with that. Okay, because like that's like a huge thing. Static margin. If we make sure our static margin is good, we are more likely going to fly. If it's not good, we're never going to off ground. So we want to make sure we have a static margin as well as like what the static margin we're actually targeting and why. So there's certain ranges for certain airplanes. I'm sure you guys saw that. So um, we just want to make sure we include that. Um, I guess like so slide 12 uh, with the tailwheel again. Just want to, or maybe slide 12, maybe slide 4 shows it a little bit better, but. Basically, what I want to say here is that the tail you guys have here in CAD is, or the tail wheel, sorry, um, is like huge compared to the airplane. Um, is that like, is that the scale? Yeah, the tail wheel. It's not scaling. I was trying to make a three model of like the piece of order. I couldn't, they didn't have like a CAD model for it. So okay. I tried like the kind of parts of it, but no, it's not scaling. Yeah. Okay. Um, the tires, the main wheels are going to be much bigger or what? I think that you said, like, would like, they be the same size? But I'm pretty sure we're looking at making them a little bit bigger. Okay. That'll change. Fair enough. I have a couple of other smaller things. A lot of it wasn't addressed already, but uh, we can go over some of stuff later. But I'm more nitpicky. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Um, you want me to take pictures? Okay, guys. Absolutely. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. Would it be possible to get your notes that you took today so that we can look over it later? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah.